let us uh, begin our session please close your eyes sit comfortably with hands on your knees in nyan or chin mudra head neck shoulders back all in a straight line eyes and mouth gently closed become aware of the whole body from the top of your head to your toes awareness of your head neck shoulders arms chest abdomen back hips legs the whole body shift your awareness to your breath and then shift your awareness once again to your eyebrow center bhru madhya at the bhru madhya visualize the form of either your guru or your ishta devata or a brightly burning flame and maintaining your awareness on this experience we shall chant the mantra om three times together followed by the shanti mantra taking in a deep breath om om ಸಹನಾವಹೈಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವೈ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಹರಿ gently rub the palms against each other place them on the floor guys and then when comfortable move the palms away open your eyes hari om sat namo narayan okay yeah. so a warm welcome to the ninth week of our swadhyay satra the series of sessions dedicated to the understanding of the yog sutras of maharshi patanjali in this ninth week we will be continuing and looking at sutras 42 to 46 understanding them and also we will be revising and trying to assimilate the meanings of sutras 1 to 27 we have till now looked at small units and now is the time that we have to assimilate the whole set the whole chapter so we will do that this week and the next week in the next session and this session to begin we shall invoke the grace of guru by chanting the sadguru vandana so we will start with invocation to the grace of guru mm-hmm. 
next we will move ahead with the dhyan mantras of maharshi patanjali and the yoga sutras yogena chittasya padena vacham malam sharirasya cha vaidyatena yo pakarotam pravaram muninam Patanjalim Pranjali Rana Tosmi Patanjala Mahapashya Charaka Pratisam Skrutaihi Mano Vakaya Dosharnam Antre Hipataye Namaha We shall move ahead and look at the sutras of this week. The sutras of week 9 oh, I think I got the wrong shape. But Sorry. So, sutras for week 9. Are you able to see my screen now? Yeah? Good. So, we will go through sutras 42 to 46. Chant them two times. And then have a look at the meanings of all the sutras. After which, we will try and assimilate the meanings of sutra 1 to 27. Let us begin. Tatra Shabdartha Dnana Vikalpaihi Sankirna Savitarka Samapatihi Smruti Parishuddha Swarupa Shunye Vartha Matra Nirbhasa Nirvitarka Eta Yaiva Savichara Nirvichara Cha Sukshma Vishaya Vyakyata Sukshma Vishayatnam Chalinga Paryavasanam Ta Eva Sabijaha Samadhihi. Once again, Tatra Shabda Artha Nyana Vikalpaihi Sankirna Savitarka Samapatihi Smruti Parishuddha Swarupa Junyeva Eva Artha Matra Nirbhasa Nirvitarka Eta Ya Eva Savichara Nirvichara Cha Sukshma Vishaya Vyakyata Sukshma Vishayatvam Cha Alinga Paryavasanam Ta Eva Savichaha Samadhihi What do these sutras mean? Let us understand them one by one. Sutra 42 says, Atra Shabda Artha Nyana Vikalpaihi Sankirna Savitarka Samapatihi. In this state, the consciousness remains identified with the sound. Its true knowledge and the reasoning. Shabda, Artha, Jnana. And such a state where the consciousness is identified with or associated with these three and it 
ranges amongst these three, the awareness gets mixed in these three, such a state is known as Savitarka Samapatti or Savitarka Samadhi. So, the first stage of Samadhi where the form of word or the meaning of the word or the knowledge which comes out, that remains and the consciousness is in that and it is iso associated with that and just stays with that at all times. That is known as Savitarka Samadhi. Then what is Nirvitarka? Smruti Parishuddhau Swarupa Shunya Eva Artha Matra Nirbhasa Nirvitarka. Smruti is memory. Parishuddhau, after having completely purified, Swarupa, one's form, absence, Eva, as if, just like. Artha Matra, only the meaning remains and it shines. That is Nirvitarka. Putting it together, after being completely purified of the reservoirs of memory, the chitta becomes devoid of self-awareness, the external identities. If you notice, this is S with a small letter, not the capital S. So it's not the higher self-awareness, it is the smaller individual self-awareness. And then Having become devoid of these, then it shines with the essence of its true knowledge. That is known as Nirvitarka. So, our, all our filters, they slowly start going away. And when the filters move away, go out, and what, what remains is the light within. If you have a lantern and the lantern has a glass, and on the glass, because the light, uh, light is shining, uh, there is soot which is accumulated. Until and unless you don't take the soot out, the light sh which is always shining within is lost. So if the soot is, the thicker the soot, the less the light is seen outside. And as the soot starts clearing up, thinning out, the light becomes brighter and brighter. This is what happens. When the Suit is almost taken care of. It's gone. The uh, individual self-awareness is gone. Then the light within starts shining with full glory. That is Nirvita Samar. In the next sutra, Maharshi says, Etaya eva sa vichara nirvichara cha sukshma vishaya vyakhyata. Now what does this mean? In this manner, the samadhi with reflection and without reflection is spoken of. So reflection of what? Reflection of the individuality. When that is there and when that is not there, that is known as savichara and nirvichara. There are multiple stages of samadhi which we will try and understand. But I will not be dwelling too much about this because for us, this is only a theoretical discussion. And yoga is a practical science. So we will only take as much as is useful for us at this point of time. In the next sutra, he has explained, Sukshma Vishayatvam Cha Alinga Paryavasana. This is something which we should try and understand better. Sukshma Vishayatvam, these subtle subjects of Samadhi, there are different stages in Samadhi. We usually feel that Samadhi is one thing, but Samadhi has got multiple stages. And he has spoken many of them and they are at different levels. As I gave you the example, you have a lantern, you have the suit on the lantern. Now, Depending on the suit, the thicker the suit, the less you will be able to see. As the suit starts thinning out, the awareness becomes. And a moment comes when even the glass breaks. 
and there is no gap between you the observer and the flame there is no uh, separation there is homogeneity that is the ultimate state but before reaching that state after having gone beyond the internal stages of pratyahar arana dhyan and then you go into samadhi even once we reach samadhi then the scholars say that there is a range of range through which the consciousness has to pass in samadhi so this is the subtlest of the ops of subtlest of the vishayas sukshma vishayatva now when we are speaking of the sukshma vishayatva it has to culminate somewhere where does it culminate it culminates in alinga what is alinga for this we need to understand the philosophy of yoga philosophy of yoga it derives its basis from sankhya in sankhya there are two eternal principles one is called as purusha and one is called as prakriti consciousness and matter shiva shakti yin yang the two principles which are eternal and in these two principles shiva or purusha is the cognition principle consciousness principle it cannot do anything shakti is the dynamic principle action principle it can undertake activities but it doesn't have the consciousness to cognate and process so according to yoga and according to sankhya when these two eternal principles come together then the prakriti which is in an unformed state that prakriti starts undergoing permutations and combinations and there are different levels of evolution as it goes down from totally unformed there is levels and levels and levels and stages where finally the five mahabhutas are created these are again still invisible but when there is a combination of these five mahabhutas principles then manifestation starts happening something which is very similar to the theories of creation in modern science this is the ultimate level and from here then is the manifestation of the body of the mind and all of that now in the stage of yoga you start going backwards from the grossest form which are this which is this body and the mind we go step by step up and as we go up we are moving from form to less form to still less form to very subtle forms to even subtler forms and even subtler forms till you come to that final culmination from where everything started that is that unformed and that is known as alinga that is prakriti so we had those two principles purusha and prakriti it is this prakriti which is being spoken of when he says the matters relating to the subtler states which are the stages of samadhi culminate in alinga so that is where the culmination is and this entire range of samadhi can be understood as the what is known as sabij samadhi so all what we have been speaking of till now is sabij sabij sir means with bij means seed what is the seed in this terms seed means the object the concept something on which our mind our subtle aspect of the mind can rest 
can anchor you have a water you have a pitcher of water you put alum in it you saturate it completely with alum still crystallization doesn't happen for crystallization it needs a seed a string the moment there is a string or a bead or whatever immediately without any other thing crystallization starts happening on that bead or that string or that whatever shape we give it will start crystallizing on that in the same manner there is that seed and based on that seed everything starts crystallizing that is sabij samadhi so this is what is the culmination of yoga to be able to efface oneself completely reach that level where the first string you know suppose you have this you, in, initial bead which was put it put into that solution of uh, saturated alum and that crystallization has begun so suppose we are at the outermost crust of the crystals then slowly you have to start coming inside 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 till you reach that part where the first bead was which actually began the process of crystallization so we are at the outermost and from there we are coming in this entire range is sabij samad and then beyond that will be nirbij when you transcend this also that good so oh, what we can actually understand is that this is a state of mind where we have harnessed the mind so that we have harnessed ourselves so that we are able to go beyond the mind transcend the mind and experience something beyond that that is the goal but what is the first step to that goal managing the mind for us it is sufficient to understand that we need to manage the mind and what is the process of managing the mind the same process so uh if i have to reach from bombay to delhi then i have to go via a path in delhi i have to reach maybe the parliament but if i have say i have to reach the parliament it means that i need to reach delhi so first stage is to reach delhi once you reach delhi then you can go beyond go inner and inner and inner and reach the parliament and in the inside the parliament you go into the well of the house and whatever our journey begins at bombay and we have to reach delhi so even if our final goal is to reach inside the parliament for us at that this point of time the reaching inside the parliament is um, we don't even have the pass to enter the parliament so let us first focus and concentrate on reaching delhi because only when you reach delhi then you can look at what is beyond that is what we need to understand and to be able to do that i have thought we should revise all the sutras only the meaning but before that before we go into that if anybody wants to ask some question or has a doubt i would like to take that namo narayan swami ji namo narayan yes chitra uh one thing about it may look very silly at this point because we have finished all these i mean done so many sutras uh but i simply wanted to find out what is the purpose of getting into that uh, inner self like you know for a human being what will he or she achieve once they know about it the inner innermost core of the tatva of which they are made of and you know uh, the whole essence of very well. all this 
very very nice question <clears throat> you see you have uh, hit the uh, most crucial part in today's times this is how actually the entire evolution of indian philosophy started there was evolution of matter we became human beings and uh, we started living life over a period of time there was evolution there was a thought what is there what is not there okay i grow up i uh, you know start earning uh, my bread then i achieve something and i achieve something and i achieve something so why do i do that i do that because i want happiness when i was a kid i was happy only if i get that toy but when i got that toy i was happy and i lost my happiness then i was happy when i had that car um, i lost that then when i had that sports uh, kit you know as i grow up i want something else so that i am happy so i have pleasure but once we get something i mean we say when we were when we are young oh once i get my driving license that is like the achievement yeah you get the driving license and after that are you happy forever no happiness still eludes us i just get my dream job and i will be happy you got your dream job are you happy after great getting your dream job still there is something which makes you unhappy and then you keep on searching for happiness no matter what we are looking at outside we are actually looking at something which we can get by which we can have happiness within that is the ultimate right from the smallest animal they are looking for happiness we are also looking for happiness if you expose the animal to heat it will go into shade why does it go into shade because it wants that happiness when it's in shade it feels comfortable and it is happy why does it look for food because the pangs of hunger inside trouble it so it is also looking for something which will give it peace shanti happiness we are also looking for the same thing our objects which we feel will give us happiness are different theirs are different but what our ancestors realized is that happiness actually is a state of mind it is not dependent on the object outside if it was dependent on the object outside then the first cup of ice cream gave me great pleasure happiness joy the second cup the third cup fourth cup fifth cup and when you take this Tenth cup of ice cream, we say, oh no, no more. How is it? The ice cream has not changed. The object is not changed. But something which gave me great joy earlier, I am saying no more. Why? What has changed? Something inside has changed. That indicates that tells us that actually happiness is not external. Happiness is internal. But since we cannot reach internal, it is projected external. and we say that i get this i am happy i get that i am happy i am get that i am happy and so therefore we are oscillating between a state of happiness and sorrow happiness and sorrow happiness and sorrow that is the duality which is being spoken of and therefore you keep oscillating in evolution it happened that no i want something by which i will be very happy all the time so wh- what is that and this quest led me i will be happy so what does i mean that quest started coming up and then oh perhaps i am this body no 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 there is when i was small still that 2 pounder baby was i the 20 kilo person was i 50 60 kilo person is i when i am young it is i when i am uh, middle aged it's i when i am old it is still i so who is this i the body is changing but still i call myself as i that means there is something beyond this body something subtler so i am wearing a shirt i change my shirt still i remain as i 
The same way the body is being changed, but still I remain. So who is this I? Once we start trying to look at that, then what is the Swarupa of I? It is said that the Swarupa is Sat, Chit, Ananda. Sat means truth, knowledge. Chit means ultimate consciousness. Ananda is bliss. That is our true form. So somebody at some point of time, for the first time experienced, oh, this is what it is. And then that bit of knowledge started getting distilled and started coming down. Everybody all over the world is undertaking this journey of evolution. Evolution of the body is over. Now the evolution of consciousness has begun. And as we proceed on the evolution of consciousness, these are the things which trouble us. Our problems now are more mental, emotional. That means they are more inside here. Earlier, the problems were out there. I did not have food. I did not have clothes. I did not have place to stay. All the problems were outside. Challenges were outside. Now the external challenges are taken care of. Now the challenges have gone inside. Why? Because that is the evolution. So in this process of evolution, the question starts coming, who am I? What is happiness? How can I get everlasting happiness and stay in that state of everlasting happiness? It is this that troubles people. Troubles people so much that they are ready to give up everything else only for this. Such people whom we can also call as scientists were the rishis and munis and their knowledge was compiled. Their experiences were compiled and a system was created so that everybody does not have to reinvent zero. We do not have to reinvent electricity. We do not have to reinvent the telephone. We do not have to reinvent uh, internet. We just use it. We work upon the same way on the inner level, we work upon the teachings, the learnings, the experiences of the previous generations. Doing so, we progress higher. That is the aim. And experiences of previous generations have shown that the culmination is trying to know oneself, which is the innermost. And to be able to know that innermost self, we need to undertake some practices, some systems. That system is yoga. The knowledge is Vedanta. So Vedanta is the knowledge of the self. Tattva Masi, Aham Brahmasmi, Pradnyanam Brahma. These are all the Mahavakyas from the Vedas, which speak about the same thing some transcendental reality. And this transcendental reality is my true self. So I need to find that true self. But nowhere will you find a clear, practical, systematic, step-by-step -step manual by which you can achieve that. Yoga provides that. And when yoga provides that, then we are able to move ahead. Since yoga provides that, that is why we are studying yoga. By which first we start with the body. If the body is not sound, we can't go further. Once the body is sound, then the pranas, then the mind, then the inner aspects, the knowledge and then the subtlest aspect. So that is how we slowly progress. That is the reason why we are doing this. And that is the reason why there is that surge. There is that uh, restlessness which comes in. Everybody has that restlessness because that has been put in to us when we are created. That pushes us towards evolution. Does that answer your question? Yes, Swamiji. A, a lot of uh, clarity. And uh, one more thing, Swamiji. Today, you know, uh, this beach thing, uh, you know, the crystallization happens around the in, innermost beach that is there. 
mm-hmm. right? Uh, so this is again giving a little uh, different aspect to one of my questions all over. Uh, I used to always think about uh, you know if the inner self is spirit, mm. right? if the if the innermost quantity or whatever you know that particular energy is spirit, and if that is same all around for every person, that's what is said in the. Mm. Uh, ultimate vedanta right uh, you know the what do you call that uh, dual and parabrahma mm. and all that right mm. so i used to feel what is the difference then if the spirit is same then how what makes everybody so different you know everybody is made up of the same spirit and okay uh, uh, externally so many things build up but then mm. if the inner self is same then at least uh, the, those who know themselves should be thinking in the same way. But then, you know, today's uh, thing is slightly, slightly giving me a different perspective. I really don't know if I'm right in understanding this or not. That's why I want mm-hmm. to clarify. Sure. Uh, so that core is different, you know. Uh, is that what it means? Uh, over which the external crystal builds. So that first uh, piece of matter Mm-hmm. Is what makes everybody different in, in no, nature. No. You see, uh, there are two points here. First point is that I have given an analogy. The analogy is essentially different than reality. Because if it was the same as reality, it would, it would no longer remain an analogy. So analogy has got a limitation. Beyond that, it, uh, the analogy doesn't work. Because the analogy has been given of a, 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 a subject of matter, because string is matter. What we are actually speaking of, there is no matter over there. It is beyond matter. But I cannot give an example of beyond matter, because I know I cannot experience that. In the same way as uh, I want the moon, but I'm a small baby and I, I, I'm crying to my mother, I want the moon. Uh, she can't give us the moon, but I'm not going to stop. Uh, and I'm not going to understand that. So how can I look at them? Or let us take a slightly different example. Moon is easier. I want to look at the sun. I want to know the form of the sun. My dear, you can't look at the sun. Your eyes will burn out. So what, what does uh, my teacher say? Okay, look at water. The form of sun is shining over there. Now, the form of sun is reflected on water. There is a reflection which is very similar to sun, but it is not the sun. There is an essential difference. And as we start understanding, first we look at that form. Oh, it is round. It is yellowish. Oh, there are some spots. Sometimes it increases. Sometimes it decreases. We start understanding everything. But at a point, we need to realize that this and that are different. So this analogy is trying to explain us something. Once we reach that, we need to drop the analogy and experience that. So in this uh, uh, situation, the analogy of what uh, the string being put in is the the entire water which is saturated with uh, solution is the prakriti. And the string which comes in is Purusha. And instead of one string, just imagine there are 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 strings which are being put in that water. The entire thing will start coalescing and you'll have 100 different crystals which are formed. But actually, are those crystals really different? No. What is the basis of their crystallization? It is the same string, the same string which extends from here to there. The whole thing is same. So in the same manner, we are all same because it is the same consciousness which comes into us, into each and every of the creation. One example which is given is the bubbles which form on the surface of the sea or water. Now, the air in the bubble is different, but actually is the air different? It's no different. It's just that there's a film which is covering it. So this is the film which is covering the bubble, the air which is within. Now the air within and air with outside is the same. 
in this dimension, we are not able to look at the connection. But on a higher dimension, there is a connection. And through that connection, there is information which is coming in. That information, we as a small bubble, start understanding. And then when we come to know that, oh, this bubble, it has got multiple layers. And within that layer, as you go deeper and deeper and deeper, you find, oh, at the end of it, this bubble has to be broken. And inside, there is the essence. And that in, inside essence is same as the outside essence. Jivatma, Paramatma. So, uh, the example of crystallization was given so that we understand that there is a range and there is a seed based on which all the um, permutations and combinations of our mind come up. And then we have to go to a stage where we transcend the mind. It is very difficult. How can you you know, become aware of something which is beyond the mind when we are inside the mind? We cannot. Therefore, we need to have different examples. And when we have those examples, we need to try and reflect upon them because these examples indicate something. That indication is important. And here it indicates that there is this body. There is the mind. The mind is an extension of the body. And there is a spirit. The spirit is the essence. Around this essence, something has been built. Now we have to try and go deeper and deeper. The moment we connect inside here, we have connected outside there. That is what we have to do. So our process of going from outside the body, the mind, the emotions, etc. And then we go beyond that. When we go beyond that inside, <laughs> suddenly we realize what we are looking inside is that which is beyond outside there. So that is why it is said, Yatha Pinde, Yatha Brahmande. So, you know, these are multiple concepts which come up. And uh, if we don't go with them step by step, it, be, it can become very, very confusing. And therefore, we just take on a few. And that is why you will see, I am not speaking much about Samadhi because that is something which is way beyond our comprehension. Whenever a topic of Samadhi comes, I say, let us speak of harnessing the mind. Because that is something which I can understand. I cannot understand something which is beyond the mind. I need to reach that level first. In the example from Bombay, I need to reach Delhi. Once I reach Delhi, then I can apply for a pass and then I can enter the parliament. Although my aim is to enter the parliament, I need to first reach Delhi. My aim is experiencing the highest self. To experience the highest self, I need to transcend the mind. To transcend the mind, I need to harness the mind. To harness the mind, I need to befriend the mind. To befriend the mind, I need to know the capabilities of the mind and utilize the mind. We are at that point where the mind is not even you know, friendly to us. And that's why we are full of those problems. So when we are full of those problems, let us first try and befriend the mind. After we befriend the mind, then we can connect to the mind. We can harness the mind. We can utilize the mind. Once all of this is done, then we go beyond and go higher. In the example of mathematics and calculus, we first learn algebra. Then we go slowly, slowly. Maybe the ultimate aim is to learn calculus, but we don't start with calculus because if you try to start with calculus, you are all blown. So we start with something which is basic, simple, and then slowly work ahead. That is why we have to start at this level. Understand the mind. Know how to harness the mind. And then go beyond. That is going, you like it or not? I like it or not? In next 5,000 or 10,000 years, that evolution is going to happen because we have started off on that path. But we are slightly restless creatures. We want to speed up that evolution. And this is all an effort in that. Does that help you or does that... Uh, uh, yes, Swamiji. It helps in one particular sense that you gave that sequence of 
befriending mind and harnessing and all that. So that becomes a manual, Swamiji. Actually, I think you should take it up in next conversations. At least it helped me instantly. So, you know, uh, the when you talk about the ultimate goal, if you give these steps, I think that will help people to understand where they are and what they are. If, if you look at, uh, we have uh, five minutes because I need to go. Uh, we have a health camp today and I need to go for that. So, uh, but let us uh, start with what that is why I had uh, said, uh, yeah. See, here, where did we begin? We begin. Now, therefore, the complete instructions of yoga. What does yoga do? Yoga chitta vritti nirodha. Yoga is the system by which we block these waves which come up in the mind. What happens after that? When we block that, then tada drashtu swarupe avasthanam. Then, having achieved the cessation of the vrittis of the chitta, the witness, the chitta, uh, the witness, the jivatma, individual consciousness gets established and uh, remains and displays the inherent nature. When that doesn't happen, what happens? Vritti sarupya mitaratra. Whatever vritti the chitta is identifying with, we start identifying with that. At this point, we are in the stage of vritti sarupyam itaratra. And where do we have to go? Tadadrashtu swarupe avasthanam. To do tadadrashtu swarupe avasthanam, what is it that we need to do? Yogaha chitta vritti nirodhaha. This first chapter, first five, first four itself, I, I would say, they actually tell the entire journey what we need to do. Then come the next and then we move ahead bit by bit. Today, since it's already 7.30 and uh, if I don't go out now, there will be uh, difficulty and class, uh, the you know, preparations will not take place. So I will need to excuse myself. Uh, we will continue this. And if need be, uh, next session, either we have a longer session or we can break it up into two sessions or something like that so that we can cover this topic because this question which has been raised is a very important question which I hope many people must be having in their minds. So I would like to uh, answer this in a more uh, details while working on this. But today, let us conclude because uh, I really need to go. I, I hope you will excuse me for that. Sure, Swamiji, and my good wishes for the camp to go well. Yes. So please sit down comfortably. Close your eyes gently. Hands on your knees in Nyan or Chin Mudra. Head, neck, shoulders back in a straight line. Eyes gently closed. Awareness at the eyebrow center. Maintaining the same experience over here, which we had chosen in the beginning. We shall chant the mantra Om three times, followed by the Shanti part. Taking in a deep breath. Om. 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 Asato ma sadgamaya, Tamaso ma jotir gamaya, Mratyor ma mratam gamaya, Sarvesham swasti bhavatu, Sarvesham shantir bhavatu, Sarvesham purnam bhavatu, Sarvesham mangalam bhavatu. Loka samasta sukhino bhavantu 
त्र्यंबकमे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमिव बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता ओ शांति 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 प्रणाम मुद्रा माता पिता बंधु सखा विद्याद्रविण मम देव मम देव देव बॉडी एंड जेंटली Move the palms away. Open your eyes. Hari Om. Satsang.